Good morning, ladies and gents. As you can tell, we're in a different setup. It's a little bit more grand than what we're usually t used to. We've got sequins, we've got glitter, we've got flowers. And that's because for today's show, we're getting into events planning. And our guest for today is none other than Anne Bundy. And she is the CEO and founder of Crystal's Eventique and Marketing Consultants. She's had years in the business, over five years. You started your company in 2014, didn't you? Yes, I did. And for today, I just, I just want to dive and delve into the world of wedding planning, which if you have gone through it before, you know it can be immensely stressful. There's lots of money involved. There's lots of planning involved. And that's what we're getting into today. What are the questions that we should be asking, right? First and foremost, welcome again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks, Anne. And uh, this is one of my favorite kinds of shows when we get into the the beauty of life and of details. Um, oof. Okay, first and foremost, this table. I do. I think we ought to take a seat. Actually, okay. let's take a seat and enjoy this beautiful setup. Um, so, first things first. How did you get started? In the world of yeah, in the events planning world. Uh, so I finished campus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I did a short course in events management. Okay. Then I started my business. But uh -huh. now the thing is, yeah. no one wants to trust you with their wedding when you're green. When it's the first yes. show, you're not, you're people not, are like, yes. "Wait a second, what have I'm you not done?" Going to the trial. Yeah. yeah. What did you study in uni? I did marketing. 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 Right. Actually, because before the show, I was asking Anne, like, um, Anne. <laughs> What do you study in uni if you want to be an mm -hmm. events planner? And she was like, I don't know if there's a course specifically for that. But you feel like marketing helped. Marketing and PR are kindly close to that. Okay. Yeah, so it okay. Helped. Okay, good. So really quick before I dive into the other questions, I even want to share with you guys a quick fact on the world of events planning. And that is the phrase tying the knot initially came from an ancient Babylonian custom in which Threads from the clothes of both the bride and the bridegroom were tied into a knot to symbolize the couple's union. So that's where the, that's where the phrase came from, which is actually really pretty, like you're tying the knot. Mm -hmm. It's like we're, we're getting deep <laughs> forever. <laughs> um, and, and another thing, another reason why I think it's important that we try and understand this um, wedding planning business is that a lot of arguments mm -hmm. stem from this kind of focus in, into, into your big day, yeah. whether it's the guest list mm -hmm. or people are coming in with their opinions or on how your wedding day should look or how much money should you be spending because yeah. it can be expensive. It can be expensive. Um, so what's the first thing mm -hmm. you would advise a couple to do if they've mm -hmm. just gotten engaged? <laughs> do you buy a magazine? Mm -hmm. Do you start budgeting? Like, mm -hmm. What's the first thing you would say they do? I think the first thing is they should establish how much money they want to spend in this event okay yeah that will be a guideline yeah that is the first thing then they should discuss the expectations do you both want a grand wedding do you want something simplified do you want something moderate that is the first thing they should discuss okay yeah oh but like when it comes to money mm -hmm. i know i know everyone is different mm -hmm. and there's no cut and paste this is the exact amount but i'm say for instance it's a wedding of mm -hmm. 500 people. Okay. Oh, 500 is a lot. It's 500, 500 is yeah, a lot. No, it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say 500 people mm -hmm. and you want a, a simple-ish setup. It's, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. but you don't want to break the bank. Okay. In Kenya, on average, is there like a, a degree <laughs> in which you should start prepping for mm -hmm. and start saving for? Mm -hmm. Is there an amount, a range? Oh my goodness, that's a very difficult question. Okay. But because yeah. everyone is in different lanes, for sure. So for some people, half a million will do. For okay. others, it won't. Yeah. For others, a million is, you know. <sighs> it's a lot. Yeah, it's but a lot. But some people who are happy yes. to splurge. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, when meeting a couple, mm -hmm. right? Because you obviously have to sit down with the two of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and get into their their needs and requirements. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you want the couple mm -hmm. to have an idea of mm -hmm. so so that you can guide them through this? Ah, okay. The first thing is the date. Okay. When are we getting married? 
Okay, yeah. date, set yeah. the date. And are you, is it set on stone? Actually, what are the most common dates uh, or seasons when it uh -huh. comes to wedding planning? Um, April, or weddings, rather. August, then a bit from October, November, December. Okay, is so it's peak the season. holiday season. Yes. April, yes. August, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. um, so set the date, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, have an idea of the date. Yes. Anything else they of should the know? Of the date, have the concept in mind. And uh, by concept, and by concept mean I mean what time do you want the wedding to start, you know? Okay, because people want, are getting creative with yeah, that. Yeah, people are getting creative. Yeah. Do you want to go to the AG first and okay. then just do a reception? Yeah. Do you want to have a church wedding? Basically, just basic things. Where is the bride going to be picked from? Okay. Then that will judge the next step. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what are some of the common mistakes that you witness mm -hmm. when it comes to planning for the big day? Mm -hmm. With a couple. With a couple, yeah. So, yeah. they come to you. Yeah. They haven't discussed the expectations. <laughs> okay. Um, then, let's say the guy was into saving. Yeah. The lady had a dream wedding in mind. Okay. They which, haven't discussed it. Yeah, which yes. a lot of times the girls can yes. go crazy yes, with the been. wild. My best friend and I <laughs> had our little album <laughs> mm -hmm. of what we imagine our wedding to look like. <coughs> to be we like, were still in high school. Yes. No one's asking so now us this to is real life. Yeah. yeah, this is real life. So they haven't discussed. Yeah. So the first thing they do is they start arguing in front of you, which is very awkward. It is pretty, oh. pretty awkward. So I feel like they need to get their you know, expectations out there before right. they come see me. Yeah. Yeah, so that it's a bit easier. Then I think another mistake, another common mistake is um, people expect committee members to fund their wedding. So you have Ooh, these grand expectations. And can you preach? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, you have these grand expectations. You're going to have shavari chairs. You're going to have 500 guests. You're going to have a distinction wedding. Yeah. But you didn't ask the other partner how much are we willing to go yeah. you know, with this? Yeah. Yeah. So that is one of the common oh, mistakes. And that's a, that's a huge one. It's a very and huge do, one. Do you find, mm -hmm. and I, I go back to something that mm -hmm. one of our guests said, mm -hmm. we had a Nico um, on our show yes. about a week or two ago, yeah. and she was talking about how when she manages celebrities, mm -hmm. you almost have to treat them like like a baby, like mm -hmm. take them very slow mm -hmm. and just guide them, say it's going to be okay, yeah. it's fine, mm -hmm. we'll figure it out, even mm -hmm. if like the house is on fire, <laughs> you're trying to calm them down. <laughs> Do you find it's the same thing when you're working with couples? It you, is. You have to it be is. like, it's yes. fine. <laughs> find a balance, don't take anyone's side, because oh. then the other person will not work very well with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, what happens when a bride and groom mm -hmm. have two very different ideas? Mm -hmm. of how they want the setup to look. Maybe mm -hmm. they've agreed on money, because that's mm -hmm. a big part of yes, it. Yes. And now they're like, okay, decor. Yeah. And one person's like, I want very clean, mm -hmm. minimalistic vibes. Mm -hmm. And someone else is like, I want rustic, mm -hmm. earthy mm -hmm. um, tones. Mm -hmm. And it's like worlds <laughs> apart. Mm -hmm. How do you merge the two? <laughs> okay. So I think the first thing when I meet my clients, I ask them, what's important to you as a person? People are different. So even if you're a couple, you have different things. Uh, that are important to you. Yeah. So maybe one person will say cake, the other person will say entertainment. So for sure, for sure, even if they're not agreeing on this, I will make sure if the cake was important to this person, then they kind of get their way. Yeah. If they had the same, um, if the same things were... Like if it was decor-based. Yes, like, if all of them I were decor-based. gold and pink, like yes. the setup. And yes. someone else is like, I just want brown yes. and blue. Yes, then at that time they have to compromise. Okay. Yeah, we just have to get to a compromise yeah. or get a color palette that can work with all the colors. Okay. Yeah. Have you had to deal with that? To yes, couples I have. that are completely extreme. Yes. <laughs> but just try and merge them <laughs> and together. Merge the two. That yeah. must be a little bit hectic. Mm. Um, and what happens when someone is on a tight budget, mm -hmm. right? Because you've just decided, look, this wedding business. Mm -hmm. I that there's more to that after. Yes. There's more to life after the wedding, yeah. which is the real truth mm -hmm. and you just would rather not spend on a wedding the, your entire life savings on that one day <coughs> mm -hmm. and so you decide i'm i'm not gonna uh, i'm not going to break the bank mm -hmm. but i still want a beautiful wedding mm -hmm. i still want it to look stunning mm -hmm. what are some of those things mm -hmm. that you should mm -hmm. then focus on and what are the ones that you should just forget about oh my goodness i think we just start from all the service providers the okay. first thing you do is can get a nice venue yeah but not very costly, especially okay. if you focus on schools, you uh, know, yeah. schools, yeah. churches, yeah. Um, such things. They'll charge you very minimal amounts okay. as compared to grounds that are, yes, hotels, because yeah. they're in business for that. 
then for the schools it's not their major business mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like a by the way yeah so you can get a school for a venue you can decide i won't do a band yeah i'll just have a dj ah you, know? you can have a simple menu okay yeah a simplified menu yeah then for the decor you can do diys i'm sure most of us are conversant with that yes, and yes. pinterest has come through for yes us. that is <laughs> like what every bride know. yeah have. in fact i think mm -hmm. i remember someone telling me that they made their gift mm -hmm. um gift bags mm -hmm. or what do you call those gifts for the, for the, the party favors yeah, the party favors uh -huh. or the wedding favors they made they actually made lip balm and went online mm -hmm. figured out how, to, how do to do it made lip balm and packaged them and that's what every guest made i was like oh. that is really but really you need unique. to have started planning yes we in a advance. lot earlier yeah, yeah. um okay. and what if you don't have a budget and mm -hmm. you're like look here mm -hmm. okay me personally mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. i'm ready <laughs> i am ready i'm ready to look of my dreams mm -hmm. <laughs> um or you just are in a place in yeah in, mm -hmm. in your life where you've saved up and this means a lot <coughs> to you mm -hmm. um what are some of the ways mm -hmm. to really elevate mm -hmm. the look and feel of your big day? When brides especially come to you, yeah. they have a storyboard of what they'd like their wedding to look like. A storyboard? Yes, like a storyboard okay. or maybe a group of pictures. Oh, like assembled. Pinterest? Yes, How Pinterest. You go on Pinterest and, like, yeah, and just your save. favorite images. Yes. Okay. Okay. So everyone has that. Yeah. So you can work with that. And how important are flowers? Mm -hmm. Because I see like this beautiful setup mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, are they as expensive as they usually are when you're just shopping for like a dozen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so are they the most expensive part um, when it comes to decorating? No, it's not. It's really? actually not. Yes. Oh. Because you buy them in bunches. Why did I think you flowers see? are so It's expensive. because you buy them as, I buy them as a retailer. So ah. for me, I buy them in bunches which is a bit easier. Mm. Okay, they're still pricey, but they're not as pricey as people think they are. Okay. Yeah. But flowers are, I imagine, mm -hmm. it's just that whenever I see these beautiful, stunning mm -hmm. weddings, it's like the entire room <laughs> is, you've just walked into an entire flower. You're mm -hmm. inside the yes, rose. Yes. Because you're just engulfed in flowers mm -hmm. on, like they're coming from the ceiling, they're mm -hmm. on the walls, mm -hmm. they're stunning. Yeah. So I imagine, in my, in my, I just imagined mm -hmm. that flowers, are such an expensive part mm -hmm. and they're one of the best ways mm -hmm. to really elevate your wedding. Now the right? thing is, now at least we are moving, moving from, what do you mean? yeah, we're moving from real flowers to artificial flowers, ah. yeah, which is a new trend coming okay, up. Okay, artificial yeah. flowers. Mm -hmm. Now I want to get into this um, setup that you just did before, because mm -hmm. we, we have to go on a break real quick. Mm -hmm. um, first things first, I okay. noticed that we even have gold and gold, mm -hmm. like the gold cutlery and the gold, um, Sequin. Yeah, sequins, the mm -hmm. cloth, the tablecloth. Yeah. Are sequins in and are gold, is gold in? Uh, gold is a classic. It's yeah. always in. Yeah. Yeah. It's going it, to it, stay it's, with it's timeless. You. Okay. And how then do you know what um, colors to pair with, mm -hmm. with each other? Are there some that you just don't put together? Yes. Because in some. this, I see here, it's mm -hmm. like the, there's pink and there's gold. And that's yeah. basically what's going around, even with the flowers. Mm -hmm. How do you then know what to pick? Uh, hmm. So now, there are colors that go well together. Okay. But now you need to know the color wheel. There's a color wheel. Ah. So from the primary colors, you know how we learned primary colors? There yes. was the red. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So there are colors that go together yeah. harmoniously. But now, for a layman, if you're not very conversant with the color wheel, you can always Google and check. Maybe if your favorite color is red and you really want red in your wedding, so just Google color, color palettes wheel. that go color palettes yeah. that oh, go color. with red oh, okay, okay yeah so it will give you like most of the palettes are like four colors together yeah. so you can decide to either use the four of them or so just two of them so yes there's a guideline from scratch yeah you're not. okay and then last question we have mm -hmm. to go on break mm -hmm. are charger like are charger plates the way to just make your dining experience look mm -hmm. really fancy because yes. i can see these like yes. beautiful yes they are and i remember the first time i saw a charger plate i was like do i put my <laughs> food on this thing why is it so uh -huh. big what do i do <laughs> someone's like just girl yeah, it's purely down. decorative yeah yes but you it's place so your pretty. plate on top okay it's yeah. so pretty thank you now we have to take a quick break when we come back we'll mm -hmm. dive further into the world of wedding planning and ask all the questions we ever dreamed of to mm -hmm. our guest Anne. we'll be back in a moment <laughs> 
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we've been talking about wedding planning. Hence the reason I'm all dressed up today for you in this soft glam and pretty little dress. Um, and we're actually at Hotel Troy. And we've got our guest today who's an events planner. I've been doing this for years. Her name is Anne Bundy of Crystal's Eventique. Um, and in the first part of the show, what we went into was, you know, if you're just starting out, what are the things that you need to remember, consider, budget for? Mm -hmm. But now I want to get into the details a little bit more. Um, and one of the things that you have to do when you're planning a wedding, at some point you have to be in touch with a vendor, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Whether it's catering, decor, DJ, MC. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that brides and, and bridegrooms should be looking out for mm -hmm. when looking out for a vendor? Okay, I think I'll break it down into different vendors. Okay. So, for example, when you're looking for a venue, yeah. you need to first of all think about your guest list. Can this uh -huh. venue accommodate this number of people? Yeah, can this is this venue con convenient? convenient. Yeah. Right, because you also yeah. don't want to send people so far. Let's say the church is here, yeah. and then the wedding reception is there. And when you're thinking about venue, you think about the church venue mm. and the reception venue. So they have to be close together at least. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you have to think about what the venue is offering. Can you use water? Can your caterer use water there? Oh, yeah. electricity. Do they have electricity? Right. Do they have toilets or you have to hire, which is an extra cost? Okay. Yeah. Are they going to manage them during yeah. the wedding? Yeah. The parking space? Yeah. Yeah. People rarely ever think about the parking That's space. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, with all vendors, you have to think about their cancellation policy mm. and their payment terms. Okay. So then you need to be aware of the cancellation policy because that can be expensive, right? Yeah. Okay. So what are the vendor? Uh, let's do a kitara. For the kitara, you need to taste the food prior. I think that's such an interesting point because a lot of times you're just like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Unless I guess you've been referred, uh -huh. yes. re they've been referred to you. Or um, you I, still think? I, I think if it's someone you've never tasted their food, better you taste need to go it. There. Yeah. Let's just taste it. Okay. Uh, you have to think about the package, the menu they're offering. Uh, the payment policy as well. Okay. What time are they going to come? Where are they cooking from? You know, are they going to cook on the ground? Right. Are they going to cook also the distance? Yeah. So that the, in case they cook from very far, then they are right. delayed. Yeah. Then that means they'll come very late in okay. case something happens. Okay. So those are some of the things you need to consider with a caterer. For, mm -hmm, for who else? The MC, mm -hmm. they have to blend in with, mm. especially with your tribe. Yeah. yeah, they need to be able to speak okay. your language. Yes, speak and your I language. mean that in every sense of the word. Yes, also think about your guests. Yeah, yeah. Is this person going to be able to talk to this age group? Yeah, yeah. That's so what I mean. Yeah, speak yeah. the language. Speak like the really language. mesh in. Yes. You know what I heard uh -huh. actually about some vendors? Maybe mm -hmm. not everyone, mm -hmm. but I think even with like event plan, event planners, mm -hmm. wedding planners, or or photographers that there needs to be a rapport, that mm -hmm. it's important that you mm -hmm. feel the vibe, mm -hmm. especially since they're trying to create your big day. Yeah. Do you think that's important? That they need to sync. It's always yeah. advisable for them to meet at some point. Yeah. Yeah. But now if you use a planner, yeah. then the planner will give you suppliers from their database, okay. the people she's worked with yeah. before, yeah. so they know each other. So that so makes it a bit easier. easier. Yeah. yeah. So but I was even asking about the relationship between mm -hmm. you as the bride or mm -hmm. the bridegroom mm -hmm. and the photographer mm -hmm. or the uh, events plan. Maybe not everyone, mm -hmm. but I think specifically with photographers yeah. or people who are there to capture the, the day or the bring moment. it to life, yes. yeah, or to bring the moment. Uh -huh. Is it important for the bride uh -huh. or for the couple? Yeah to feel comfortable or is I that feel, just like yeah i feel that the photographer it's more important for the photographer to understand them uh, that is why most of them will offer engagement packages prior oh. so when you book when you book their wedding with them they give you an engagement mm. shoot for free mm. they're trying to get your vibe how you gel with your your groom yeah you know? like are you in, fun people yeah. are you yeah so that way he can be able to create a concept mm. yeah of how your photography will go mm. yeah will go like Okay, so that's it for the photographer. Any other vendors or tips? Mm -hmm. Entertainment. 
Okay. Yes. Um, if they're especially a band, yeah. that they know how to dance to the, you know. Yeah, it's your band. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. not like an old crew and yes. then you're just playing Lil Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> and trying to be cool and everyone's like, what, what's this madness mm -hmm. you're playing? Mm -hmm. so they I need to understand you. that. I hear yeah. you. But with every, every service provider, you need to get a contract so that, yeah, you that's, know. That's <coughs> so important. Mm -hmm. Because they I sign a contract. Yeah. Yeah. It's that everything that um, you discussed is noted down. Yeah. Yeah. In it, case of anything. Exactly. Because yes. you never know. Last never minute, know. someone could be like, "Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you sure I we, said, this. we said this? Yeah, Are you sure I was supposed say this. to bring the flowers?" And mm -hmm. you're like, "It's the day. <laughs> Don't ask me these questions." Yes. Okay. Um, what is usually the most expensive part of a wedding? Because I know earlier I was mm -hmm. like, "It's flowers, right? It's mm -hmm. flowers." And you're like, <laughs> "No, it's not flowers." Mm -hmm. So what? usually mm -hmm. maybe you can mention like the two three items that mm -hmm. take up the biggest part of the budget okay most of the time the food and the supplies and by supplies i mean yeah the tables the chairs oh. the tents the stage oh. the supplies oh. yes how can you how can you try and minimize that cost do you skip dessert do you skip the salads mm -hmm. like how do you still have this amazing buffet but you don't go broke. <laughs> now, I think what happens is if you get a hotel like yeah. to do your food, okay. that I think is inevitable. Okay. But if you get grounds somewhere different and get a caterer, that is when I think you can negotiate your way oh, yeah, into okay. a cheaper menu. Yeah. But if you go the hotel way, then yeah, yeah you just have to take the cheapest. You just have to do it. Yes. And, and most guess. of the time, they don't charge you for the grounds. Ah. Yeah, so that balances most oh, of the I time. I see what yeah. you mean. So they charge you for food only. That amount is then <coughs> catered for. Yeah, catered for in there. In the grounds. Okay. Um, and now, of course, the wedding planning process mm -hmm. can be incredibly tedious. Mm -hmm. We were saying earlier how you can form some real and uh, like big arguments through this, and enemies and friendships can yeah. also be broken. Mm -hmm. So. In order to mitigate that or to try and prevent the whole blowout or the stressful bit of it, mm -hmm. how early on should someone start planning mm -hmm. for their big day? Okay. I won't say there's a specific time, okay. but six months sounds good enough, especially for people who have saved prior. Ah. So now it's just looking for service providers. Right. Yeah. And creating, trying to bring your concept to life, just meeting your suppliers going through that yeah. but if you haven't saved then probably a bit earlier yeah, start even yeah. earlier and i know uh, you uh -huh. had said uh, previously that um one of the first things that you want couples to have an idea of is that there's a date yes like what day are you getting married mm -hmm. so if you have the date settled when it comes to the the vendors or the the planning process mm -hmm. what should you book first what's the first thing that you should go done mm -hmm. yeah uh, for a christian wedding yeah a priest definitely the person ah. who's going to officiate okay your wedding okay that and a venue those are the first two things you do why the venue because a venue that oh, is how sets the mood yes and the tone that is where everything because that's how you do invitation cards that's how you tell your you yes. know everything everything comes from the venue especially if it's a destination wedding yeah too, especially then that. you need to know well in mm -hmm. advance uh, what are some of the details that are often forgotten when mm -hmm. it comes to wedding planning Mm, just the small, small things that what people are those forget. Small things? Yeah. Are, uh, for example, uh, during the church ceremony, um, then the pastor is telling guys to kneel down and they forgot to carry the kneeling pillows. Oh. It's very small, small things, but they count. They make so the now they have to kneel. On, yeah, yeah. yeah, they make the difference. Is there anything else that you, you can yeah. give someone? Because I'm sure right <laughs> now there's some brides uh -huh. to be watching yeah. and are like, Pen and paper, notes, <laughs> come on, tell uh -huh. me. What, what have if, you're I there, if you're there, if you're there and you've forgotten, I don't know, maybe like a cloth, mm. just maybe your maids mm. of honor can give you something yeah. and you can kneel on it. But it's always good to factor that right. in because they're always going to kneel. Yeah, and yeah. is there anything else that. Yeah, that people they forget remember? envelopes for the monetary gifts. Oh. You know, people forget to one. plan for transport for the gifts, especially what? if you get, oh. you know, like you don't plan prior. Then right. now so after. So the gifts come and you're yes. like, Ooh, uh, yeah, then after that, you're like, who's where are they even going? And I've heard some really mm -hmm. crazy stories mm -hmm. of people's wedding gifts being stolen. Yeah, that happens. Oh. <laughs> so that happens a Can lot. Can you imagine? Because I guess mm -hmm. you were so focused on everything else. Everything else, you forgot. Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah. That's a good tip. Um, and then now, when it comes to destination weddings, mm -hmm. 
where do you start? How different is it from planning, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, like a, a wedding around the, yeah. your area? Mm -hmm. How different is that? It's very different. Mm -hmm. First of all, on the wedding day, you're just planning for that one day. But mm. for a destination wedding, you have to think, because guests will probably arrive maybe two days earlier yeah. or one day earlier. Yeah. So you have to plan for entertainment or just how to keep them busy. So you yeah. might have something else like a meetup before. Oh. So you're not just entertaining people on one day, on the wedding day. So, so you have to yeah, think and about after. Yeah, you have to figure out transportation, accommodation. Oh. You know. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's beautiful. People take it as a vacation. Okay. Oh, yeah. as a yeah, yeah as a right. vacation. So. Are there perks or downfalls to this mm. that you would? Uh, just that it's expensive. Okay. But if a couple has the money, then mm. it's fine. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. It's a bit harder for logistics, especially if you take it to a place where um, there are no guys who do supplies, or uh. you know, then you have to bring everyone from yeah. where you're from. Because then you have to bring in everything, like yes. the chairs, yeah. the tent. Oh, but I imagine even uh -huh. if you did a destination wedding, mm -hmm. perhaps the thing mm -hmm. to consider is to do it at a hotel. So yes. it, it alleviates yeah. a, a lot of those costs mm -hmm. to begin with. Yes. Um, now, flower walls, mm -hmm. they were all the rage. I think the first time I heard the concept of, the, of a flower wall mm -hmm. was like Kim Kardashian's yes. flower wall. Uh -huh. That's when I was like, what is this beauty? <laughs> and... Mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> ever since then, I've just seen so many of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to know, are they still trending? Are they still a thing, flower walls at a wedding? They're still used. Yeah. People are just trying to be a bit more creative with them. Maybe trying to do mm. flowers for the ceiling instead, like oh, dangling flowers on the ceiling. I've seen those. Yeah, you know? They're so beautiful. Um, trying, uh, people are even doing artificial flowers, the dangling artificial flowers for the backdrop. Yeah. Yeah, as I've compared. Seen, I know you did like yes. a backdrop for me that was <laughs> mm -hmm. like the paper flowers. The paper flowers. That was such a good one. Yeah, that one. is also like, something else. And it was a great place for also people to take photos to take pictures. if you want to. Because mm -hmm. that really is why mm -hmm. you want a flower wall. Because yes. you want a, a strong backdrop, yeah. either for the couple or for the photos. Mm -hmm. um, now, what are the trends mm -hmm. besides flower walls? Mm -hmm. What else are couples doing now that's mm -hmm. just really elevating mm -hmm. their wedding day? <laughs> okay, I think people are using fancier chairs. And in the events ah, industry, yeah. like that is always changing. There's always really? something new. Yes. And it, to always me, I'm just like, new. it's a chair. Yes. It's just a chair. Ah. But it br brings out the fanciness. That's true. Yeah, you know? That's true. Like the gold ones you were sitting on mm -hmm. before, they yeah. were just so you know, mm -hmm. um, extravagant, like mm -hmm. majestic almost. You yeah. felt it, you mm -hmm. felt like you were, and some of them even had like extra gold mm -hmm. backdrop back there. And yeah, I like, really behind. Fancy. I think I'm more into like a rustic. A rustic theme, yeah. I know, Sharon. Yeah. I know. <laughs> then people are also Very going relaxed. into glass, glass tables. You really? Know? Yes. It's a bit, co okay, it's very pricey oh. as of now. Okay. When a trend is new, it's very expensive. Ah. Very, very expensive. Um, yeah, but that's that's I available like the now. Idea of, so with the glass table, then you so do you don't need a cover. This. So you just do maybe centerpieces in, oh my in gosh, between. I would love that. Then you do candles or something. I would love that. Yes. Oh, you've mm -hmm. just mentioned candles, mm -hmm. and I wanted to touch on lighting. Mm -hmm. How important is lighting on the big day? Mm, it depends on lighting is important mm -hmm. for your pictures. Mm -hmm. So if you have a very dark tent, then you need to factor in that. But if you have something that allows natural light to come in okay. then it's okay yeah yeah and i like that this tent is mm -hmm. clear mm -hmm. because it allows you to enjoy a good day if it's mm -hmm. a beautiful day like today it's not too hot mm -hmm. it's not raining and mm -hmm. pouring so it brings in a natural. lot of natural light yeah what about things like candles candles are better used at night ah. first of all to bring in the mood yes to bring yeah. in the mood and of course, because of the wind during the day. So yeah, I like how you turned this bit of <laughs> down as you were chatting. Oh it's my the goodness. Person that way. <laughs> it's fine. But uh -huh. um, yeah, candles. Yeah, good. you can do candles. Yeah. But now during the day, the wind might blow them. Ah. So most of the time and at night. And we miss them during the day. Yes. You, you can you even notice we've done lighting here? You can't even you see can't it. Notice, you can't right. notice. Yeah. Oh, wait, first of all, the sun is coming in so beautifully mm -hmm. now. Oh, this, <laughs> let me tell you something. What time is it now? For whatever time it is right uh -huh. now, mm -hmm. now is the time to be planning your wedding <laughs> at Hotel Troy. Because the light at this time, <laughs> oh, it just feels so warm. Um, okay, so what are the things that you could do mm -hmm. as the bride and the bridegroom mm -hmm 
I know I'm saying bridegroom, but a lot of times we all know yeah, it's, it's the ladies it's who are bride. planning that big day. <laughs> <laughs> but for the guys who are planning their big day, <laughs> what are some of the things that you would advise a couple mm -hmm. to do or to not do mm -hmm. to remove stress altogether? Because I find that even <coughs> this planning process can also lead to a lot of arguments between mm -hmm. the couple, yeah. between the families, mm -hmm. and you're just like, I don't even know what I'm doing this mm -hmm. for. Yeah. So what can you do to take away to the calm. stress? Okay. I think the first thing is, it's almost mandatory nowadays to do pre-marital pre, pre counseling. Uh, yeah, first of all, it helps you just yeah. to yeah. understand each other yeah. and how to fight conflict. The other thing in terms of weddings, it's to discuss expectations prior so okay. that you're not fighting over things that yeah. are, yeah. Then something else, because there's a lot of interference from other people. Okay. Maybe just stand your ground, decide this is what you want. And stand I like your that. ground. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good test of, mm -hmm. of the future because, yeah. again, lots of people will be having opinions on yes. how you need to Live run your, your household, yeah. when you should have children, mm -hmm. where they should go to school. So stand mm -hmm. your this ground. This is where I they like should that. start. Start it now. Yes. <laughs> during the wedding planning <laughs> during process. The wedding planning. Okay, so we have to take a quick break. When mm -hmm. we come back, we'll go over the third setup um, and dive back into the world of wedding planning. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we've been talking about wedding planning and we have Anne Bundy in stu well, it's not really studio, in tent, in beautiful staged setup with us today. Um, and we are at Hotel Troy. And for now, I want to know from you, what are some of the ways that we can try and make sure that our wedding day is really unique? Because I could see from the setup, even just like this table, um, the textures in here, the, the charger plates, the gold um, flower stands, mm -hmm. they all make a unique statement. Yes. What else can a couple do or mm -hmm. what can they focus on mm -hmm. in order to really make their big day mm -hmm. feel like theirs and very, mm -hmm. very special? Oh, okay. I think the first thing is you should incorporate your personalities. Okay. In the wedding, in all aspects. Okay, but what if... Uh -huh. One person is introverted, I'm just happy being uh -huh. in my own corner, I don't want the world to see mm -hmm. me. And the other one is like, bam, in <laughs> your face, check me out, look at me, what, what? <laughs> so how, mm -hmm. how do you, how, do you yeah, how too? would you do that? I'm yeah. thinking in terms of uniqueness, I'm thinking about where to take photos, uh, you know, like if you're into shopping, then you can go into a mall. If you're into trains, you can go into a train, train station, <gasps> Ooh, you know, that's good. such things. You Find can think about things, a different yeah. menu. I guess, to make it unique. Yeah. yeah, find the things that unify you. Yes. Yeah. Then again, yeah. what people are doing with polar, polaroids, just put your oh. pictures in your yeah to personalize it a bit more. Yeah. I yeah. Think so. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to now get into color coordination. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you've got. I don't know if it's if it's just me, mm -hmm. but you've got a thing for like gold tones mm -hmm. and pink accents. Mm -hmm. um, are there color schemes? Yes. I know earlier you gave us tips on how to find colors that work yeah. even if you have different um, mm -hmm. color interests, but are there color schemes mm -hmm. that work specifically good together mm -hmm. or accents that you bring in that really make the, the, the big day pop? Mm -hmm. um, I think you can always, okay, what you usually do is once you choose a color, yeah. because sometimes you're not so sure, um, you can have the palettes and everything, but it's also always good to do a mock setup prior to your event. Oh. Yeah. So have your decorator do a mock setup so that you see, for example, in mm. this table setup, maybe if we used a gold tablecloth and white tables, it would be too much, you know? So okay. you try different things and you come up with something that looks nice. I like that, that yeah. you're giving the, the yes. advice of testing mm -hmm. things out. Because yeah. in your mind, you could think, I want purple yes, and works. blue and mm -hmm. pink and yellow, because mm -hmm. that's what you're into. Mm -hmm. But the minute you see it all come coming together, together yes. you're like, hmm. Yeah. Actually, on that note, are there other things you should test? I know you said you should, you should test out the food or mm -hmm. taste the food mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. You should now yeah. do the mock setup. Yeah, for decor. Anything else that... You need to you do prior. Do, yeah, to mm. check. I think for photography, you need to see their photos. Oh, and Yeah. yeah. No. Maybe even the mock engagement <laughs> photos would work in yes. this place. Yes, yeah. in this yeah. case. Yeah. Um, mm. What about cake? Cake tasting. Cake I tasting. Forgotten that. Yeah. Yes, you have to do a cake tasting. And that's a big one. That's a big everyone one. Is like everyone wants to do cake tasting. Exactly. And that is how you decide which flavor you like best ah. and what to have for this and what, yeah. Okay. In your five years of events planning, mm -hmm. how 
many bridezillas have you encountered? Now, if you're not familiar with this term, a bridezilla is a female, and I'm making this up as a well, <laughs> but it's essentially a female who is a nightmare mm -hmm. to work with because she's extra excited about the wedding mm -hmm. in particular about every last detail. And mm -hmm. if you do not get it right, she will bite your head off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you dealt with any bridezillas who are just like, oh my, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. I'm about to quit, hands up, I'm done. Yeah, nothing <laughs> is ever right. No, luckily I've really? never, imagine I've what? never met, but I've met a groomzilla if there's such a thing. No. Yes. No. Yes. What does a groomzilla do then in that case? Um, <laughs> when you tell them you have pink roses, then they tell you, no, that's for sure. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Arguing about color schemes. So about that, color schemes. Yeah. Just, in that case, how do you deal with the bride um, or the groom? Um, I think with the time you just realize people are different, mm. and you just have to learn how to deal with personalities. Be patient. I know this is just for a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Never argue with them. Oh. They're still your clients at the end of the day. But what if you feel very strongly that that isn't going to work? If it isn't just, going to work, you just tell them. Yeah. Yeah. How do you just let, let them? Like, this is not working. Uh, Have you ever had to let go? No, no, no I haven't. I'm just thinking, in case it happens, that's what I If I'll, it gets too yeah, much? I would say. Um, have you had incidences where the couple didn't quite like mm -hmm. what came out mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of, let's say, the wedding planning or the, the setup? Mm -hmm. Have you had those instances where they're like, uh, uh -huh. I had one sure. instance when I was starting. Yeah. Uh, and it was due to a miscommunication of colors. Uh, yeah, which yeah. I but guess you can deal with that when you, you have you the mock setup. Yes, so you always have a mock setup. Mm, mm. Mm. Um, <clears throat> what are some of the tips that you have mm. for wedding planners who want to get into the business mm -hmm. and have <coughs> no idea where to start? Mm -hmm. I think the first tip is mm, do a lot of research. Research yes. on research the online industry? on the industry okay. because things keep changing. Also, uh, I think, um, let me tell you what I used to do. I okay. used to um, just go to weddings that I'm not invited to. No. Yes. And Bundi yes. being a crasher. Okay, go <laughs> yes, on. Yes, I was a crasher <laughs> at first, just to try and get suppliers for my database. Uh, so now when you attend, you know this MC is really good. Then you talk to them after the wedding, Ooh. then you just put them in your database so that the next time you get a client, because they're going to ask you, okay, fine, which MC can I work with? So you have oh. a database. Yeah. So maybe they can try to create a database. They can visit venues. They can test caterers' food. Yeah. You know, such things. Just create a portfolio. I like that. Yeah. And I like that you're also hustling mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and trying to do whatever it takes to make sure that you've got your clients uh -huh. as happy as possible. Yes. Now, I want to get into this setup a little bit. Okay. Um, can you take us through what inspired you to put together these colors mm -hmm. and why this kind of tablecloth? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes. Um, because this tablecloth um, is white, I wanted to put an overlay that had a bit of gold accent. Oh, so this yes, is... this a, is an overlay. Seek, okay. It's sequin, but it's... Like it's an different. So there's it's a white tablecloth. Yes, there's a tablecloth. Oh, that means you can put any color. It could be black. It yes, could be blue. It could but be you anything, put this because it's translucent. Okay. Yes. So then, since gold and rose gold, like gold, this is rose gold. Yeah. Go together. Okay. So I tried to balance since there's gold here. Yeah. So let me have rose gold here and a bit of ivory. Oh. I yeah. see it. And the ivory also plays with that mm. tone of gold. Yes, I can notice it the gold are, are different tones. Yeah. They're in the same palette. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how about height? I know when it comes to home decor, mm -hmm. one of the ways that you can play around mm -hmm. with um, creating an interesting home setup mm -hmm. is to include height. So you have a lamp that's a little higher mm -hmm. or a plant that's higher, mm -hmm. artwork that just to bring the eye yes. a little bit above. Yeah. Is that what's happening here? That's what's happening here. But now if you looked at a whole setup, yeah. uh, I'd probably have this higher than the next one. Oh, Not so all of them several. are the same. Yes, yeah. are oh, on the same, same level. So now the next table would have a shorter one, perhaps. Oh. That there's also a balance. And when you look at it from afar, from. it looks really nice. Oh. Yeah, there are some you can see where the flowers are starting from. There are some you just see from a certain angle. Nice, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. How else can you play with height or mm. just introducing different elements um, to just make your, your setup look mm -hmm. unique? 
Um, you can do long flowers and no centerpieces whatsoever in those tables. Oh, yeah. I or, like those ones. Yeah. Those or you can just, actually. when you have the long flowers that go across, you can have now the small, very short centerpieces in between. Yeah. Yeah. Then you just do away with the long centerpieces um, wholly. If yeah. You feel that it's your guests much. are not going to be seeing each other. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, since it has no, space it's in fine. between, it works. Mm. And are there rules when it comes to round tables mm -hmm. versus rectangle tables? Yeah. No, there are no rules generally. You how just come, try. Yeah, how come most people go for the round ones? Um, or is that me? Is it me or do most people <laughs> go for the round ones? Most people go for that. Yeah. But the reason is this can accommodate 10. Okay. The other one can accommodate 8. Ah. So in case you're in a, a numbers number, game. Yes, a, a numbers budget game. game. Yeah. We're back to the drawing board. I mm -hmm. hear you. I feel you. Yeah. This makes financial yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then now I want to get into a program that you started mm -hmm. for events planners. Uh, okay. To sort of just allow them to get a glimpse of what this world is about. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through that a little oh, bit? Oh, yes. I started uh, an events mentorship program Yeah. Um, that happens quarterly. So I have four every year. No, three every year. Then uh, it was basically to help aspiring event planners have a glimpse of what it's like. Not just teach them theory, but allow them to have practical. Mm. So now they do practicals. So that when they go out there, they're not starting from scratch. Okay. Because most of the time you go to school and do theoretical bits. Okay. So now what I do is we do the theory a bit, then we do a bit of practicals. Mm. Yeah. So by the time they're going out, they have venues, they've visited venues, they've created a database, they've worked in the events industry a bit. They actually right. help me in my events oh, once good. in a while. Yeah. 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 So and, that means, and that means they don't get the question from a new client. like, so what have you done? And you're like, yes. Uh, ah, and I that helps with the portfolio yeah. as well. Yes. I haven't started, but mm -hmm. you can trust me. I really mm -hmm. like it. And they're like, no, no, no. Unless yeah. you've done this many yeah. events, I'm yeah. not interested. That came from my experience. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. That you're paying it forward is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yes. Now, what resources mm -hmm. are there mm -hmm. for brides and bridegrooms mm -hmm. who are in the planning process? Mm -hmm. Are there apps or tools, mm -hmm. I don't know, books or something mm -hmm. that they can go to? Yeah. Um, to really help guide them because there's so many little things like today for instance we've just talked about planning this event this uh -huh. big day uh -huh. we haven't gotten into don't the forget details. to get extra <laughs> buttons in case your wedding dress pops and you yes. do that uh -huh. don't forget um i don't know like uh, the right bras mm -hmm. or, or underwear mm -hmm. for the big day yeah you could lose your mind. There's a lot of so, detail. Yeah. So mm -hmm. are there tools or resources that you often refer mm -hmm. your clients to? Like, this is a great place. What I do is I've created a resource. So I've created checklists and timelines oh. that I share with my clients. But also, apart from that, there's, uh, you can use Google Docs, which helps you like do your budget, do your timelines. Um, have your, the list of your bridesmaids and your everything. Yeah. And then when you share it with one person, then... Actually, everyone that's uh, everyone that's shared on the on that link mm. can see when someone else ch else changes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a really nice so tool. Really and Pinterest. Every bride has to have Pinterest. Yeah. I'm a Pinterest lover. Mm -hmm. Actually, we did a home decor show, and mm -hmm. she was also like, "Pinterest is your Pinterest, friend." Yes, okay. It Just is. make friends with mm -hmm. Pinterest because then it brings everything that's in here. Mm -hmm. To life, yes, and you can then you get ideas, yeah, see how things work together, yeah, and mm -hmm. what the latest trends are, mm -hmm. what, how you can incorporate yes. these angles mm -hmm. to your big day. Last question I have for you today because mm -hmm. I feel like I've just asked you a million and <laughs> one questions when it comes to wedding planning. Uh -huh. I see back here that mm -hmm. you set up a different stage and set yeah. up yeah. for the bride and groom, mm -hmm. right, or mm -hmm. even the bridal party, yes. right? It's not, it doesn't Necessary. always have to be just for the two of them, mm -hmm. it's for the bridal party. Mm -hmm. um, how important is it to create a different mm -hmm. place and what are some of the things that you can do mm -hmm. to make that area look like wah, wah, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. sour, okay. right. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be the focal point because ah. that's where everyone is looking at. Not everyone. the cake table? No, people are looking at the bride and groom. Okay, bride and groom. At okay, that and the cake table <laughs> okay. next. Yeah. So that has to be the focal point. That has to be the most beautiful for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the reason it's done that way is, especially the, the stage bit, yeah. is so that everyone can be able to see them. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, can I say, I, uh -huh. I feel like it's so much pressure because uh -huh. everyone is looking, is looking at, at you. Them. Like you really raised. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to take pictures of you. Like, ah, so, so if much. you're underneath. Ah, mm -hmm. But I like it. And what are some interesting ways mm -hmm. to make the backdrop interesting? Because, mm -hmm. of course, if people are taking pictures, yeah. you don't just want to have a plain mm -hmm. white tent, which you can, sure. Yeah, yeah. But are there a couple of things that you could do to make it a little bit yes, more interesting? I definitely. Like gold um, sequin yeah, backdrop that going, you've got going there. Down. Uh, you can do lighting, but also, again, it depends on your theme because yeah. it has to blend with what you've done for your mm. setup. So if it's rustic, then you have to do something rustic for your backdrop as well. Yeah. Just something really modern, yeah. it has to be, yeah, it has to reflect that. Right. Yeah. So if you did a lot of flowers, you can do the flower backdrop. Flower wall. Yeah. Actually if you did yeah. artificial flowers, you yeah. can do artificial. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, Anne, thank you so much. Thank you for putting this beautiful setup together. I almost wish you had a bride and groom so we don't put this to waste. Like, yeah, uh, part, we might as well. Just We've got the lights, yeah. we've got candles, we're going to be here all night pretty much. Um, for now, though, I want to share with you guys the WCW that we've picked out for you. And so today, we are celebrating a lady Kenyan actor. That's Nice One Jerry, popularly known as Shiro. She won the Best Actress in a Comedy and TV Series category at the Africa Movie Viewers' Choice Awards. That's AMVCA. She's an actor in the weekly TV series Anti Boss, which airs on NTV acts in the theater, and also features in a couple of Kenyan movies. So, Shiro, we congratulate you and we celebrate you for all that you were doing. Keep shining, keep winning at life. And now I'm going to have to say goodbye. But first, make sure you come back tomorrow, 8 a.m. sharp, because we're talking to Onyango, who you may know as Rick's poet. He's a phenomenal man who has been through a lot. And he shares with us his story on... Um, PTSD, that's post-traumatic stress disorder. Because we're talking about mental health, because we want to grow and learn and live our best lives. So we're learning and living tomorrow, 8 a.m. with Onyango. Be there or be square, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.